Good morning. Good afternoon. Good night. And welcome to Jazzy Conversations. I'm Teef. And I'm Gigi. And we're excited to be here. Listen, thanks for checking in. Welcome to Jazzy Conversations. I'm Teef. And I'm Gigi. Yes, you are, G. Let's have some fun. Yes. Oh, today I'm exciting. I call him a friend. He's uh-huh. a great guy, Vince Ward. This, this, I'm so looking forward to oh. meeting him. He has done a lot of work. People are going to recognize him when they see him. Big guy, big guy. So tall, so talented. But the most important part, mm-hmm. this guy is so humble. One of the nicest guys you're going to meet. Seriously. I can't wait to meet him. I and I like wait. to tell him, listen, man. You're from Ohio. Oh, so I really like him. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, team. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn the tables on you a little bit. Are, uh, are you all right? I'm I'm all right. Why all right. why why are listen, you turning the tables on me? In honor of Father's Day. Uh. I'm going to turn the tables on my boy, T. Ah. Right? Okay? Before I do that, y'all take a look at his shirt. That's right. Look at that. Welcome Listen, to Jazzy that. Conversations. I'm T. I'm Gigi. That's right. That's I love right. that. That's beautiful. <laughs> and Tweety, so, Bird, Tweety Bird bought me this. Look at that. The yeah, baby. Yeah, look yeah, at the baby good. bonnet. Yeah, I good. love it. Always supporting. So so we're going to play some games, T. Are you ready? It. I'm ready. Right, I'm going to ask you. I told you I was good at riddles, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I might mix it up. I have some riddles and I might throw some other things in All there. All right. Here we go. Are, are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. All right. <laughs> so question number one, it's a riddle. Okay. The more you take, the more you leave behind. What am I? The more you take. The more you take of them, the more of them you leave behind. Kibbles and bits. <laughs> ah! <laughs> like, I don't know. Hey, what is it, Jake? Get ready. Footsteps. Oh. I love it. I love it because he was Kibbles guessing and that. Bits. Kibbles and oh, bits. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. Here's another one. Here's another one. I like Here this we one. Go. Here we go. In honor of Father's Day. Okay. Teeth's father has three sons. Mm-hmm. Snap. Mm-hmm. Crackle. And. And. Pop. The correct answer Snap, is right? Teeth. It's Teeth's oh, father. Oh, that's all. Oh, this girl. I just knew. I just knew I had that. Oh. <laughs> you saw the confidence. Oh, yeah. Y'all saw the confidence. I, I love it. I and love Kay it. And thought the it. same thing. <laughs> he thought the same thing. Didn't you? Exactly. I love it. Exactly. I love it. I'm that just saying, if you had asked that me that, I would have got it right. I'm like, Pops. I'm just saying. <laughs> you got all right, it. all right. Here, I'm going to ask this one. Not a riddle. I'm going to ask you. I'm going to throw out some of what you threw out at me. Okay. All right. I would love for you to sing the a song, okay. the first song that comes to mind uh-huh. that has the word, I'm not going to make it hard. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Happy. Happy, 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 happy. Do we know that song, y'all? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Come on, I'll give you five more seconds. Happy. Um. Two. You make me happy. Uh, He's making us a cause. Right, I can't I'm even happy think of that. Oh, if you feel I can't even, like a, I know. You I see the pressure? You see the pressure? Later on, I'm going to say, why didn't I say happy? Oh, listen, happy. I know, that's the pressure. I just want, listen, I just, I'm going to turn the tables a little bit. Okay, I'm going to ask, I'm going to try one more. Let's see. Okay. Sing it in honor of Father's Day. Give me a song with the word Papa in it. Uh, okay. Um, this is softballs. Papa, so, don't let your baby grow up to be a cowboy. But that's mama. Uh, <laughs> see? Uh, uh, Papa. Softballs. Uh, softballs, you said? I'm, I'm throwing you softballs. Oh, softballs. <laughs> soft, that's a song? No. Oh, uh, oh okay. Papa. Uh, Papa. Mama. Look at look at, look at Ken, Kenny thinking. Yeah, he can't think. If you said mama, but Papa. Papa's a rolling stone. Papa was a rolling stone. There we stone. go. All right. I knew I could see. I threw you a softball. All right, I'm going to do one more one more um, one question more. for you. Let's see. Uno más. Uno más. Uno más. Oh, look at that. All right. So, I love it. In light uh-huh. of it being Father's Day, okay. what for you is the best thing about being a dad? Oh my goodness, that's a good question. I'm gonna be honest. The best thing about being a dad is, oh man, going back, my kids just watching them grow up. Hmm. 
Mm. Every time they say daddy, it feels good to me. Aww. That's a private thought. Private, uh, daddy, daddy. Yeah. You know, daddy, can we go here? Daddy, can we do this? Yeah. Going on vacations with them or knowing they watch every move you make. Yeah. And knowing they like to laugh at your jokes. It just feels <laughs> good. Seriously, when they're growing up, yeah. it feels good. Taking them to soccer practice, track practice, all these different practices, mm -hmm. and having that daddy daughter time. Yeah. Because all the way up until I, like I just told you, mm -hmm. it was always daddy daughter time up until mm -hmm. high school. Ah, they, so they, things change a little bit. Both of my girls, mm -hmm. we spent a lot of time in the car. We'll drive, we'll have breakfast together, a lot of conversations. But when that transition came to, okay, I'm about to go to high school. Okay, Dad, uh, I'm hanging with Mom now. And so, uh, I love but it. But yes, just those memories. And I just, love it. Yes, just being a dad is, a, is an amazing, amazing uh, feeling, mm -hmm. an amazing duty. Yeah. And uh, just to see them uh, progress the way they have yeah. over the years. You know, I mean, my older, my oldest daughter graduated college in four years. That's very important. Mm -hmm. To I say that, but I mean, in four years. She yeah. went straight to school and graduated mm -hmm. from Southern Connecticut State University. Got down University. to business. Yeah. And then my baby girl went to school on a full scholarship, mm -hmm. on a track scholarship, and graduated this year and now headed off to law school. So, I, I love it. Yeah. You, you see that the ball of mush he turned into? Yeah. Do you see, little, you see, daughters, what you do to him? Yeah. So, so I asked him, tell me the... First thing that the top thing, and he just can't, he's gushing. That is a proud daddy. I, I have to say when, that's one of the things my father always said. He loves to hear daddy. He just loves to just hear it. Word. So it, listen, in honor of Father's Day, I want to wish all of you dads, my partner here, Teef, I wish you a happy oh, Father's Day. My, my wonderful husband, who's a great dad. Mm -hmm. Adam and my own dad, happy Father's Day and happy Father's Day to all you dads. Our producer is a dad. That's right. So many amazing fathers in, so in our lives. My... Listen, I want to destroy the myth that black fathers are not around. They are around. Look around. They're there. They're in their children's lives. And you're the, you're the, you're almost the most important part of your sons and your daughters' lives. So happy Father's Day. From Tiff and Gigi. And happy Father's Day to my dad, Pastor Elder Danny Davis. Wow. My dad. Love you to death, Dad. Happy Father's Day. God bless. Yes. All right. So on behalf of Jazzy Conversations, I'm Tief. And I'm Gigi. I hope you guys are ready. You ready? Here we go. Welcome to Jazzy Conversations. I'm Teef. And I'm Gigi. And Gigi, give it up. Look who we have on the screen. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Vincent Ward. Vince, yes. thanks for coming on. Welcome. Welcome to the hey, show. appreciate y'all having me, man. Sorry about the um, time. Don't worry. Hey, this is East Coast. East Coast time. <laughs> Indeed. I'm just Indeed. glad I'm up. <laughs> hey, this is an amazing guy. Yes. One of the nicest guys you're going to meet. I mean, great personality. The same way he's smiling right now. When I first met him last week with Tara, yes. the same smile. Hey, what's up, man? Nice to meet you, et cetera, et cetera. With I all the success it. he's had, have achieved, he was the same way, you know. I love it. We are so glad to have you on the show today, Vincent. Appreciate you guys having me. Thank you very much. So, Vince, we're gonna go through the. And hey, I, I, I only know how to be one way, and this this way. There you go. That's it. <laughs> so, what we gotta do is we're gonna go through the process. We want everyone. I know every. We're gonna have a lot of views on this mm -hmm. one, and we know a lot of people know who you are. And you and I spoke off camera how you got through your transition, but we're gonna take people mm -hmm. all the way back to the beginning, and then we're gonna lead up to this new movie that he has out right now. Mm -hmm. It's another huge new movie out right now. Uh, so he has a lot going on. So is that okay? Can we go back to the beginning? You asking me? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so Vince, where are you originally from? Tell us your siblings. Tell us your story. Man, I'm originally from Dayton, Ohio. Uh, I've been out here in LA for 23 years. Okay. Um, you know, my parents, my sister, my nephew, my 14 grandkids, everybody is still back there. My kids is back there. Uh, everything I do is for not only my city, but most importantly, leaving a legacy for my grandkids mm -hmm. and being able to put my parents in a position where they don't have to be worrying and, you know, have a good life 
for my wife and just be a positive person for people that not not the people that not only the people that I don't know, not only the people that I do know, but the people that I don't know. So, you know, just trying to be a good dude, man. You know, the older you get, you should learn from your mistakes in the past. And um, yeah, that's that's what I'm doing, man. I'm I'm just trying to, you know, teach, preach, mentor, lead, and just, you know. Be a good guy. Just be a good guy. Listen, I can't let this slide because I need for all of the audience members that don't know this saying, black don't crack. I need you to understand what that means. Brother, tell them how many grandkids you have. 14. And you didn't start having grandkids when you was 30 years old, right? Or 15 years old. So listen, if you don't know, now you know. Look at this, brother. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) <laughs> Big V, that's my boy. I call, I love it. I call it. him Big V. Yeah, my oldest, my oldest grandkid, she, she's 13. Oh, so. wow. That is beautiful. Yeah. And I love it. Talking about legacy leaving. Absolutely. That's where Absolutely. it's at. I love it. I love it. And so the exciting part, I, I want to say, because we have a huge base in Ohio. Mm-hmm. As Vince know, I went to the University of Finley. She went mm-hmm. to Temple, so Temple we have a huge you. base there as well. Mm-hmm. But going back to Dayton, Ohio, oh yes. my goodness, I love it. That's where he is originally from. Yeah. It's a major city in this, uh, uh, the state of Ohio, and he knows I'm a Buckeye fan for life. So, oh wait. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Indeed. so, so, Vince, after you go to high school, after mm-hmm. did you do any acting in high school? No, I actually never thought about being an actor okay. you know my whole thing was i was a, a basketball star okay. and i used to dance in a rap group we would open up shows for mc hammer public enemy Ooh, if you were dancing Soul for mc Pepper. hammer you were athletic that's it <laughs> yeah we opened up the shows for him. my group we was the our group was the the opening act uh-huh. you know pretty much so you know we was performing when it was 30 people, 50 people in the in the arena. <laughs> Including the setup crew, right? We know. <laughs> right. So, you know, right after right after high school, I didn't go straight to college, even though I had letters from every college you can think of. Wow. I just wanted to travel with my rap group. We was on It's Your Band Records with Vanilla Ice. Okay. And we would travel. We wasn't making no money, but we was having a good time. Mm-hmm. And after a couple of years, um, you know, doing that, a basketball coach from Chicago called my my parents. It's like, can he still play? And she was my parent. My mom was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure he can. And they gave me a full scholarship. Look at that. <laughs> wow. And she was like, you haven't even seen him play. She's like, ma'am, I've seen your son play. And after two years, I know he can still play. So. Wow. That's a blessing. I don't think that's, I don't think that's common. Now, now where did you go to school, Vince? I went to a I went to a JUCO called South Suburban College in Chicago. Okay, mm-hmm. big shout out. Okay. And after after playing for a couple of years, you know, you know anything about the Midwest General Motors is the job to have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that summer, I started working at GM, and I never left. Okay, I never left GM General Motors until I got hurt on the job. Wow. <laughs> okay. And they told me I couldn't come back. <sighs> So then I started working at a place called Champ Sports in Dayton, Ohio. Became the number one salesman in the district. They said, you're doing a great job. We want to train you as assistant, but you have to move to Columbus. So I moved to Columbus, became the number one salesman in the district there. One day, the general manager came and said, you're doing such a great job. How far you want to take it in the company? I said, I would like to have a position like yours one day. Two weeks later, this dude fired me. What? Fired you? Yeah, fired me. And my manager told me, whatever you said to the general manager, that's why I had to let you go. Three weeks after that, I went and saw my very first play. And I had never even seen a play before. And I was about Uh 28, 29 years old. Mm -hmm. Sat there in that little theater, about 15 seats, uh, called Living the Dream Theater. And I fell in love with acting that day. And that was in Columbus? Columbus? I was that was in Columbus. And I was so excited, you know, to meet the actors and actresses afterwards. They said, you should come audition. I was like, really? Okay. What's an audition? I didn't even know what an audition was. <laughs> and it's like it's like an interview. So I auditioned. I got a part. I started doing more and more plays. Um, I, then I got a lead in a in a in a short called um I forgot the name of it. <laughs> and um, and then the movie, the movie um traffic with Michael Douglas came to Cincinnati and Columbus. And I got a part. 
But let me go back. Champs tried to give me my job back, and I told him no. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I got a part in the movie Traffic. I told my parents I was moving to L.A. I moved back to Dayton, started working at the airport. But this is the crazy part. When it was time for me to move here to L.A., GM cut me a check for $10,000 telling me not to come back. So what we might think is a negative might be a positive yes, to push on. you into what you really and truly should be doing in your life. Yes, sir. Say that. I love it. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. after, I mean, like four years later, everybody lost their, their job at GM. Mm-hmm. God just gave me a push to get out of there before that can happen. So I, I thank champs. I thank GM for, you know, for firing me because if they wouldn't have, I'd probably still be stuck in Dayton, Ohio. Listen. Oh, now, I love that. Eating story. that chicken from getting, eating that chicken from uh, Broster Hut. <laughs> In butter and aluminum foil. <laughs> that's 300 pounds by now. That's, that's <laughs> this place in Dayton, Ohio. Uh-huh. If you lived in Ohio or you went to Dayton, they had this nice, way before Popeyes and way before, I mean, it was a mm-hmm. different type of, they had this butter and this aluminum foil. Uh-huh. And it was, uh, oh, roast, what was it? Broaster Hut? What was the name of it? Roaster Hut. Roaster Hut. Yeah. Yeah. Roaster Hut. Oh, it was y'all, amazing. Y'all talking about butter and chicken. I'm still caught up in this man talking about the providence of God yeah. in his life. <laughs> yeah, but go ahead. Tell me I'm about sorry. the butter and the chicken. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I remember, I remember growing up practicing my autograph because I, I thought it was going to be for, uh, you know, going to the NBA. But now I do all those conventions and people, you know, they they come out there for your autograph. So and I, and it's still it's still to this day I still can't believe that people pay you for that. You know what I mean? It's just like you want my autograph? You want to pay me for it? So it's just very humbling and. Matter of fact, I just signed a couple autographs, sending them out for somebody for their um this event that they have. But you know, I never take that lightly. I'm just like, wow, you know. Mm-hmm. So Vin- Vince, real quick, I'm sorry. So let's go back to that year when this all happened, when you got to check ten thousand dollars. What year was that when you transitioned to LA? Um, two thousand. Two thousand. So I've been out here since two thousand. Okay. And you know, you you accomplish a few things, and then you think. You know, you're going to come out here and just blow up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's not it. Man. Not for everybody. No, no. And and if you do blow up or somebody try to give you something, it might, it might, you know, it might come with a price. So I'm, I'm grateful for the grind that I've continued to have. Yeah. You know, I, I never sell my soul and do something strange for a little piece of change or straddle the fence. That's right. Because I know, you know, not only that I have a belief in God, but I got these, these, these little, these grandbabies looking at me and I got my parents looking at me and I never do anything to embarrass my family. Beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. When you're talking about legacy building, which you started with, mm-hmm. you, you don't make those decisions about money because it's about legacy. I, I love that mm-hmm. as a foundation. Yes. So Vince, Indeed. okay. So in 2000, you go out to LA, no representation, manager, agent, or just solo. Let me tell you something, man. I, I, I hit up so many agents and managers mm. Because then, you know, you was mailing stuff in or dropping it off. I had, I probably hit up like 75 to 100 people. I had two that that replied. Okay. One, I went to their office and they were so rude. And I was just sitting there like I was invisible. And even though, you know, I didn't know anything about this whole, I was still learning the industry. I knew I didn't want to be represented by somebody that would treat you like didn't that. care if I was there or not. Mm-hmm. And I left. I left before I can even meet with them. Yeah. And I went to the to the other one, and they was like, "We would like to sign." I was like, "I would like for you to sign." Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> so yeah, I started off with started off with them, and you know, over the years things have changed because I've changed, and I know what I'm going to deal with and what I'm not going to deal with. Mm-hmm. And if you ain't putting in the work like I'm trying to put in the work, then, you know, we're not a good fit, not a good team. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. So now you get with that agent in 2000, they send you out on a few auditions. What was your big break? Your first big break? What does that look like for the people? <clears throat> well, it wasn't even anything that I even auditioned for. I was a stand in. And with, if people don't know what a stand in is, it's like you're acting like you're the star while they're in makeup or wardrobe so you're basically have, helping the crew out with the lighting with the sound and okay. stuff like that you know the placement or where they should stand and you know all that type of stuff so um you know i started doing standing work 
when I first got here. Mm -hmm. But no, let me go back. Let me go back. I take that back. Bring it down the house in Ocean's Eleven. And and the reason why I end up getting Ocean's Eleven is because I told you guys I did the movie Traffic. Right. So when I moved out here, you know, it was time for the premiere. Now, me and my parents, we told everybody to go check it out because that was actually my first big, big break. Okay. So I'm at the premiere and I'm sitting there and my character's named The Face, okay? Mm -hmm. And I stop and confront Michael Douglas. So my scene was with Michael Douglas. So I'm sitting there at the premiere and here we go. He's driving. I'm supposed to come out and stop him. He drives right past me. I'm devastated. And when I tell you devastated, I mean devastated like mad because mm -hmm. I feel like I've been played. But that's me not knowing this industry. So afterwards, I go to um, Steven Soderbergh, the director, big time director. And I said, hey, man, why you cut my part out? Just like that at the premiere. So he looking around like, where's security at? Because this big uh, who is dude this? is tripping. <laughs> <laughs> He's a big boy. And so he was. He apologized. He said, well, Vince, you know, we went over budget. We had to pay Michael up front. He said, that's just, you know, how it is. And he saw that I was sad and I didn't mean no, I didn't mean no harm. He said, but I'm working on a new show, a new movie called Ocean's Eleven. Mm -hmm. This one, you wrote, wrote numbers down, wrote it down. He said, give my secretary a call. I have a part for you. Mm -hmm. Who? Get a little part in Ocean's Eleven. I'm at the premiere again. And this time, music is playing over my voice. Oh, I said, oh, my God, this man done it to me again. But I didn't let him have it this time. I was just like, okay, I've never let this happen to me again. Then the movie uh, Bringing Down the House with Queen Latifah came. Mm -hmm. Now, I was only supposed to have three words. By the time I finished finish adding stuff, what you ain't supposed to do, I had 33 words. Okay. <laughs> and, the thing, and the thing about it, they kept everything I added because it was funny. Good for you. So sometimes That's you right. sometimes you just got to take a chance. You know, I took a, I'm going to tell you this this one other story. I took a chance on the the, the show The Wire. Mm -hmm. Now, I always loved The Wire. All time course, favorite for me. <laughs> yeah, it was filmed in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And I was filming an independent film in Baltimore. And I three different people, three different occasions locations i told these people i'm gonna go try to get on the wire while i'm here mm -hmm. you know and they all three of them told me don't do it that woman's mean i'm like what why is all these people keep saying that i said okay i'm going anyways i put a little package together i go in her office and i introduce myself to the secretary the secretary is like oh okay all right well you just wait right here i'll go tell her and this woman's probably like eight feet from me her office and i can hear her cussing going at it he don't stop in my effing office without effing calling so the secretary comes back out and she's like i guess you heard that huh? i was like yeah she's right there i can see her <laughs> <laughs> i can see her yeah i said i'm sorry ma'am you know no disrespect i left but you know what else i left i left that package there mm -hmm. an hour later she called me and she told me to come in for an audition and she apologized, but she said the reason why, and this is important, she said the reason why I act like that is because so many people come in here wasting my time, not having their stuff together and all that. She ended up letting me audition. Long story short, I got the part. But if I would have listened to those three people, I would have never got that part. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you gotta sometimes it, you See take that yourself. chance of hearing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you take that chance of getting here and get the F out. Mm -hmm. But you leave that package there. Yeah. So good for, that's a good that's story. A great story. He said, I bet I'm gonna bet on myself. Oh man. I yeah, love it. You have to. Yeah. You have to. You can't depend on your agent and manager to do everything for you. Mm -hmm. You gotta take chances. You gotta start, you gotta start, you know, uh making your own projects and that's what i did with devil Row. i got tired of getting killed off i got tired of saving up i ain't gonna say that <laughs> woman <laughs> so why i always got to be the one to get killed saving saving them mm -hmm. so i ended up creating my own stuff and i'm not gonna kill my own self off so mm -hmm. that's what devil Row and all these other projects is coming from wow now we're gonna get into that i want to save that for the end you have so many mm -hmm. projects out okay so Talking to Vince, yes, he says, "Teeth before 
because one of my favorite characters, I told him, I said, I literally remember you from Everybody Hates Chris. Uh -huh. You know, and he says, but you don't understand. I was really a stand in. So mm -hmm. why don't you tell us about that? How yeah. did that transition happen? How did you happen? parlay that into a yeah. role? So I, so I, for, mm, I started doing stand in work on the show Girlfriends. And by me being tall, I wait, was Wait, 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 Vince, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You was on Girlfriends? Yeah, I was started off being a stand in on Girlfriends. Oh, was a, and then a they get, yes, okay, that was a okay. great show. Mm -hmm. gotcha. Yeah, and then they started giving me different parts on there, but I wasn't standing in on there a lot mm -hmm. because I'm 6'4", so if it wasn't a tall character on there, I couldn't stand in for him. So one of the guys that was leaving Girlfriends, he's like, man, I'm going to a new show called Everybody Hates Chris, and you'll be the perfect stand-in for Terry Crews. And I'm like, who is Terry Crews? <laughs> he's like, well, you know, big dude, you know, day day and all that other stuff. I was like, oh, okay, cool. So I went over there, and the thing about it is, once again, betting on yourself, okay? Mm -hmm. Even though I was Terry's stand-in, I would have all the other stand-ins for Tashina and for Tyler and, you know, Imani, with, that's their real names. Mm -hmm. for, the, for the characters, make sure we read the um, the script, read the sides and do the scenes just like you would do for, you know, for Terry. You know, I'm, I'm really acting like I'm Terry. So you're auditioning, really? The, right. So I'm letting <laughs> those producers and those writers know that I'm just not a stand-in. Yeah. You know, I after time went on, they started giving me all these different parts and all, a lot of directors would go to shows and be like, you know, hey, let's could, could, is Vincent available this week? We want him to come over here and do the show, not as a stand in, mm -hmm. but as an actor, as Vincent M. Ward. So, you know, when you let people know that you're not just an extra, you're not just a stand in, you're not just that, that, you know, doing that, they take you, they take you more serious and show you more respect and, and that start happening for all the stand-ins. We end up going in as a team and really doing those scenes. And then I remember like the fourth season, you know, Terry would come to some of my plays and stuff. And he would tell me, if we come back for season five, I don't want you to come at, come back as my stand-in because you're too talented to be my stand-in. But the problem is, well, not the problem is, the only other thing was I was probably the only stand-in that had a stand-in. So when it was time for me to go do my own thing, I would call somebody like, look, I need you to come stand in for Terry. And that's what happened. Oh, that was that's so smart. So that's <laughs> so smart to, to really use that, uh, create the, la the lane and the opportunity. Wow. Yeah. And I'm still cool with some of the producers today, the UPMs, uh, the, the, the writers, uh, Rodney Barnes, who's doing his thing. He has, uh, Whole, all these different shows out. He ain't called me yet, but it's deep <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Hold out, hold <laughs> out. And, he, and 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 Jim Michaels, you know, he went on to do like some huge shows, and we're still friends. Mm -hmm. So it's just being patient, you know, just being professional, and um, you know, just waiting your time. Yeah. Now we do this. Uh, everyone, everybody hates Chris. After that's over, what's the transition? Because I want to lead up to the Walking Dead. What was in between? Everybody hates Chris. Oh, it was a lot of stuff. It was a lot of stuff between that That's and the Walking Dead. It's so funny because he a lot said, of "I stay know. working." Let's I be clear. Yeah, yeah he does. <laughs> yeah. I, ain't, I, ain't gonna, I ain't gonna say that. But, <laughs> but a lot of people think like the Walking Dead was my first thing, and I had never even heard of the Walking Dead. Now, how did that? Like, how did that look? Tell us how did that audition and how does that look? Tell us that story. No, I just audition. It was. I actually did a video audition before video auditions was the thing to do. It was pretty much me acting like I'm hiding a picture behind the toilet because I was a prisoner. So it was me hiding a picture behind the toilet and the guard catches me. Okay. And that's how Oscar came about. Mm -hmm. It was, it was for a prison. It was for, you know, the prisoner. And, um, I remember when I first got the job, you know, everybody was excited, excited. And I was like, well, what is it about? And they told me. I was like, who the heck watching that? Me. <laughs> me and all my cousins people. and my family, right. my husband. And we were all watching. <laughs> yeah, but I had no clue. But for me, I don't I don't put one one project above the other. You know, I, I look at them all the same. I mean, if it's take an it independent seriously. film, mm -hmm. if it's an independent film, a student film, I'm still going to be there on time having my stuff mm -hmm. together. You know, it's it's showing them respect because you never know where that independent film 
uh, director or writer might end up. They mm-hmm. might go ahead of you or that student. Right. You know, I, I just believe in just treating everybody the same, even if it's a big budget movie and you have a PAs who running around basically doing everything that you want them to do or, you know, they're doing stuff you don't even ask them to do. But I still treat them with respect for, for the simple fact you never know who, who his daddy or his mom or her mama might be. Right. You know, their parents might make be having them start from the bottom instead of just giving it to them. You're gonna call it you're gonna work your way up. Mm-hmm. So their parents might be the, the president of the of the studio. You never know. You just, you know, it's all about respect, yeah. being on time and just being professional. I love it. And you started off with the, your interview with this. I, I'm showing up like this everywhere I go. Absolutely. And you got you to yeah. respect that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's not about it's not about kissing somebody's butt. It's not about doing something to get something in return. It's just being a good person. And, and, and if we're going to be on set 13, 14 hours, you know, I want to be I want to feel comfortable. I don't want to feel like I need to go upside your head or tell you off mm-hmm. because, you know, we here every day and you making it bad for everybody else. Mm-hmm. I remember on The Walking Dead, you know, it was a cool, cool set. It was hot, hot days. And it was one person that was behind the scene that was kind of a troublemaker. And guess what? They got rid of him. Mm-hmm. And it was always peaceful. You want peace. That's right. You know, you want to you want to feel like. You're at your second home, especially if you're there working. All those hours, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's pretty much your second home. Because by the time you get home, you're tired because mm-hmm. you got to get, you got to go to bed, study a little bit, and get ready to get back up the next day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This guy's a stand-up dude. I'm telling you. Uh, well, you it, it, it comes <laughs> gee, through. It me, comes through. Gee, when I met him last week, everything he's saying, I'm being quiet because I'm listening to him. He's telling the truth. Yeah. He's just saying it on camera. Yeah. When I he was the mm-hmm. first person there. Call time was eight o'clock. Well, I was first. He was second. <laughs> yeah, because they changed my call. They ch- <laughs> said, hold on, hold on. <laughs> hey, yo. And such a professional. Now, as yeah. soon as he come through the door with his coffee, I'm the new guy. And the first thing he says is, oh, hey, man, nice to meet you, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. You know, boom, boom, boom. And just, just so humble. And I'm sitting there like I'm in, I'm in star. I'm like, yo, yo, I know you. And he's like, you do? And I'm, <laughs> I'm like, no, I know you from everybody hates Chris, you know? And he's like, oh man, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, nice to meet you. Yeah. Let's yeah. talk. Mm-hmm. And then I said, yo, you know, I went to school in Ohio. And he was like, where'd you go in Ohio? So, Finley. But mm-hmm. I used to go to Dayton. And then from that moment, we just, just started yeah. boom. Mm-hmm. And uh, he on set, Tara, as well mm-hmm, as well mm-hmm. as Vince oh, and yeah. Darlene. We had such a good time uh, just shooting together. But, but but you know what, Tim? I had just left McDonald's giving McDonald's breakfast. And some dude said the same thing. I just saw, you know, I know you from everybody. He asked me, was I an actor? I was like, yeah. He said, were you on Everybody Hates Chris? And I was like, yeah, and, you know, we just talk, and, it, and, it, and it, it makes you feel good, you know what I mean? Yeah. It makes you feel good, and, and it ain't no funny style with me, like, yeah, leave me alone type. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, it's like, wow, okay, you know, I appreciate it. You don't, you don't, you don't want to be like that. I know people who ain't really done nothing in their career, and they be on, have the nerves getting on set and that funny. I'm mm-hmm. like, well, if you can't handle the little stuff, how you spell God, God to... Bless Trust you with, you with the big stuff. Mm-hmm. That's go. right. There you go. You Come preach on. it right up, Gigi Pre- Lane, you know, right there. You know, I, I hear, I hear the you gospel it when it's being spoken. Now, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so, it's so, true. so, Vince, this has been an amazing interview. Yeah. Okay, so, but I want to get, I want to give you the platform to talk about your new movie because mm-hmm. that's big. It's yes. really big. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to transition into my partner has three important questions to ask you. And then we're going to go into that well, because I'm looking at the clock. I'm going to jump right in there. Would you name okay. for us, please, your top three podcasts that you listen to or subscribe to? Um, Honestly, I really don't listen to much. If anything, I just listen to them like, you know, on social media here and there. Yeah. I mean, of course, like the Breakfast Club and... Vlad, even though they keep calling hey, the hey, hey, Big V, Big V, and, and this is a podcast. This is a podcast. Well, this is this is new. We just <laughs> met last week. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "I'm just." He said, "I'm getting into it. I'm I'm feeling it, but I'm just getting in." <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, I I love your energy and all that. I'm gonna have to check you out. You know. Uh, and, um, I actually have one coming out too. Okay. Oh, nice! And we will be tuning in, and we both will subscribe. Absolutely, you but, better but believe it. But you know what, though, man? Honestly, with a lot of these podcasts, I don't like 
when they just get up there and they just had anybody on there and they be cutting each other off talking and cussing all the time and you know it was all about booty and money and all i'm just like ah, and... no, it's getting kind of weird right so when, when we came on but that was one of the things that we discussed we wanted it to be a place where people could talk no drama you know, if you, mm -hmm. if you've ever seen our show, nobody's coming on here dishing dirt and mm -hmm. talking mess because grown people just want to just want to talk, just hear each other, hear the stories that we have and be able to share. Right. And not right. tear each other down. So, yeah, we that relates. That definitely resonates. Yeah. And, and, and honestly, it's not about for me, it's not all about it being a celebrity or being stars or whatnot. Mm -hmm. But I think the, the word celebrity has been blown out of portion for the simple fact a person who works or got a million followers can be a celebrity now mm -hmm. and they get hired over somebody that's really um, some work an actress mm -hmm. or an actor mm -hmm. or whatnot and you know i ain't hating on it you know if it works for you but don't call that person a celebrity if they just out here on this show fighting and, and telling people off and that's all they do mm -hmm. i want to know what is your true talent because anybody can cut somebody out mm -hmm. right it right. doesn't take talent to do that. Mm -hmm. wow, beautiful, uh, tr beautiful, true, beautiful. Truth talking, truth talking. Okay, so Vince, this is open dialogue. Please tell us what you got going on. So we know about that. Tell us about the new movie you have come uh, out right now. The name, title, okay. everything. Well, it's well. I actually have a couple of things going Let's see, on. We want to hear um, about all of it. Let's go. So I have a movie coming out with Danny Trejo called Seven Cemeteries. It's like a horror comedy. It's it's more funny than anything mm -hmm. i'm on a new show called the black hamptons it's on bt um we're like the money team we're, we're btb is uh myself black china uh ron rico and my boy darnell and uh of course Devereaux that came that came out this this past friday it's actually on video demand um i i don't i used to call it the the new age candy man until Candyman came back. <laughs> then, right. Looking at some of these, you know, some of these write-ups, you know, talks I am trying to copy Candyman. My character in Candyman is totally different. Okay. Only, only comparison is we're both black. There you that's go. It. And that's it. <laughs> okay. That's and um, you know, sometimes people can't separate the two. Like it can only be one. Too no, it can be a whole bunch. It's been a whole bunch of white killers. Jason, if that's the case, Jason and, and Michael Myers is the same. Right, right. You know, Devereaux and Candyman is definitely not the same. And I think they might be saying that because Candyman plays my dad. <laughs> Shout out to Tony Todd. But it's it's a, yeah, it's a movie about it's a movie about revenge. It's a movie about love. It's a, a movie about redemption. It's a movie about um, slavery, um, you know, it's also, I, well, I, I kind of think of Emmett Till, you know, if Emmett Till can bring his mama back, I mean, if, his, if Emmett Till's mom could bring him back, mm -hmm. she would probably want those people who hurt, hurt her son to get hurt. Right. So it's all about Devereaux coming back and going after the bloodline oh. of the people who hurt him. Interesting. So that's story. why I yeah. put the two together, mm -hmm. you know, not saying he's Emmett Till. But but the way that he dies in the movie is like Emmett Till. Mm -hmm. And what's the name of that one, that, that project? Devereaux. Devereaux. All right. So we'll put that on the screen. Y'all got to check that out. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Vince? And, I mean, the trailer is out. It's with Lionsgate. The trailer came out um, last week. The movie came out this past Friday. And you can catch it on video demand right now. Apple TV, um, uh, Amazon Prime. Whatever you know, mm -hmm, where you mm -hmm, find mm -hmm. you stay, you stay working, and you have a big TV series coming out twenty twenty four. No turning back. <laughs> oh yeah, no turning back. <laughs> so, so you got a lot going on. You you constantly working. That's a that's a great thing. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? In everybody's eyes, that might be true, but in my eyes, I got a lot more to do. Okay. I'm not where I want to be, but I'm not where I used to be. Mm -hmm. My goal is not only to be able to you know work but to create work for other people too yeah. yeah oh i love it beautiful 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 vince this has been amazing thank you so much for coming on the show we truly thank appreciate you, you on behalf of jazzy conversations i'm teeth and i'm gg have a great night vince take care all right take care thanks for all having right. me absolutely take care right now later oh 
G. That was that was great. This, that this was is great. A, a humble guy, genuinely like I could feel his genuine kindness, like just coming through the waves. Nice Everything guy. Everything you saw on yeah. TV right mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. that's his personality. Real laid back. Yeah. Just talk the same exact way. Just, and he's done a lot. Oh. He's, been, he's been around. Oh my goodness. I what says, a great guest. What I said to him, I said, So so what's going on now? He said, Oh, I gotta go back to LA because I'm I got a new movie coming out, Devil Roll. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, you stay busy. So you know I'm gonna say what I always say. We gotta have him back. Oh, we gotta have him back. We're gonna have him back. <laughs> yeah. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. G, this yes. has been another amazing episode. Yes, it has. Having a lot of fun. I am, T. I'm having a great time. Listen, on behalf of Jazzy Conversations, I'm Teef. And I'm Gigi. Have a great night, guys. Take care.